Terry Stubbs. All right, Jim. What are you doing here today, Terry? Well, we want to stop this U less happening, so we want a bit of a U turn, I think, um, because it's just not fair for old people. Well, and just it's, not, it's just not right because when we come from Uxbridge, well, there's trees. So you've got to pay twelve and a half pound a day just to use your car. Yeah, if I go ten yards, it's going to cost me twelve pound fifty out of my drive in Uxbridge. But if I go a hundred yards the other way, there's no U less. Suppose car on his head in it. He was a lawyer for the 9/11 bombers. How the hell did he get yeah. into? Our government, how did he get into our country? My name's Howard Cox, I'm the founder of Fairfield UK and I'm standing for London Mayor for the Reform UK. Well, they should vote for me on the basis that I'm the best possible candidate because I'm going to get rid of all ULEs, not just extension. Every bit of ULEs will go, every bit of low traffic neighbourhoods and every 20 mile an hour zone is going to go and every stupidly wide cycle lane that's ridiculously wide. Keep cycle lanes, but not the big ones. Uh, yes, I did take a jab. How many? I, I think it's two. I think I can't remember now. And I think I took a booster, but I didn't take anything after that. It's very simple. And ask your question. Uh, I totally back Reform UK. Nigel Farage asked me to stand. Personally, okay. and, and Richard Tice. Yeah, he's a friend. I know Mr. Tice is a bit flippy floppy with the old vaccine situation. Uh, he's not. He's not as, as think. He's very much on the side of where I am. Didn't Richard Tice's missus write a, a workshop? Yeah. Didn't she write a book for? Matt Hancock. Yeah, and she regrets it, I think. She regrets it? Yeah, she did all the stuff, though. She, uh, uh, Matt Hancock hates her guts now because she she did write a book for him, which is quite right. It's a job. She writes people's b books for them. But what she did is to get all the WhatsApp details and all the messages. It just goes to show how duplicitous Matt Hancock was. What do we think about the Blade Runners? Well, obviously, I can't condone their behaviour at all. Um, but it's, it's fair to say that I understand their frustration. I understand why it is that they're, they're doing what they're doing because they, they feel let down by the system. Bear in mind, there was a, con a consultation that took place, okay, and Khan ignored that. And people feel that the system is morally, politically, as well as financially bankrupt. Yes. And that's what this is all about. So that's why, you know, people say, hang on a sec, we're not being listened to. Why did you have a consultation in the first place if you're not going to listen to the result? I've been opposing this before it was even popular to oppose it. Right. And Bombay Council have. So before this even became an issue, we were there at the front line. Let's put it this way, Bombay Council has a policy of no more speed humps. We have a, a no LTNs, etc, etc. So well, what you know, does that matter if, if Khan just says you've got a rabbit? He can't. Because we can turn it down. But what about the ULEs then? Well, he, that we can't stop because he says we have to have it. Well, this is what I mean, yeah. using that logic. But, but we do everything we can to hinder, to frustrate, to prevent, so, to delay. So by your own admission, democracy is a farce. Because if he says so, it's a dictatorship. Yeah, because he, because he, in fairness, and he's trying to get these things, he's the London authority right. and we're the local authority. We can't overrule him. Councils should have more power, you know. Councils should have more power. Well, we are, well, this is the, the, thing. Problem, the problem is the government gives all these things to quangos who are unelected and we can't do anything about it. So what are you doing here today, Mark? I'm down here to protest against uh, all this Ula's expansion. Where are you um, from, Mark? I'm from his, uh, Oxton. You're not even that far out then? <laughs> no, well, I've got married and moved to Bucker still, so I've got a lot of friends and connections in Essex. Right. Um, so you're back and forth out of Essex? Uh, to, to back to Oxton, because basically I've got two homes. Uh, where, where I've grown up with and where I've spent my married life with. Um, I've got friends in both departments. Um, plus also I've got family um, on the outskirts of Essex and stuff and also still back in Hackney Stroke Islington. Yeah. Um, so I'm down here because of all this old nonsense about Euler's expansion. And I mean this geezer thinks we walk about with mug tuck back as forward. It ain't about clean air. He's going to sneak in pay per mile stroke road chart. Do you think he's fit for purpose? Is no, he? no, no, he ain't. Look, in the past, I was on the tube, right, going from Oxford Circus down the Green Park or vice versa. Ken Livingstone was on it, couldn't stand him, and he's doing a flare uh, catalogue thing. So we used to use public transport. Boris, when he lived around the Angel, around the back of Upper Street, all the boys would see him about, all the cab drivers would see him cycling about, he was out and about. And so people didn't hate their guts. No, that was controversial. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I know all these threats. Who made them anyway? Well, it's an invention. It's yeah. not of old cobblers. Smashing. What publication are you? Sounds very posh when you call it that. 
Hang on one sec. Mate. Right. <laughs> My name's Jim. I was on the front page of the Telegram the other day. Oh, well I was, was interviewed. Oh, yeah, I've had loads of in. Because uh, I um, I'll run the Facebook group Action Against Unfair You. Les, we've got 70,000 members almost. Fucking hell. Oh, yeah, we're, we're great. What's your name? Kingsley Hamilton. Kingsley Hamilton. Yeah, if you go Google me, you'll uh, find out all about me. Right. Um, so uh, I was arrested for being allegedly one of the brain. Oh, sorry. I was arrested allegedly. Uh, I wasn't caught red handed because I wasn't caught red handed because I didn't do it. Um, <laughs> um, I was arrested for allegedly taking you Les cameras and the prosecutor said this guy's the ringleader of the Bra Blade Runners. No way! That's yeah, yes, why it's all over the Sun. Top boy, mate, we got all top over, boy all over the, the camera. Sun. Read, read the article in the Sun newspaper. Um, so I stood for election in Uxbridge uh, as an independent candidate. I've been fighting this for a long time uh, with uh, many other people who've been fighting this for a very long time. Nick Harlow's one of them, he's been fighting this for a long time. The thing is, the, the politicians are just not listening. You know, people are desperate. We're in the middle of a cost of living crisis. And he keeps saying, oh, you know, toxic air, toxic air. It's a load of old rubbish. It's it's, it is bollocks. Um, the thing is, there are going to be more people who die from depression, from suicide, uh, from, I mean, stress itself reduces life expectancy. And let's not forget, so in Kensington, Kensington's got the worst pollution in London, but Kensington's got the highest life expectancy in London. Come on, it's not rocket science. And the thing is, when you move a city car to the countryside, it's going to do more miles and it's going to pollute more. We can't keep Sahara Desert dust out of London. How are we going to keep this extra pollution out of London? It's nonsense. Put it off to the May elections. If you get voted in on you, Les, that's democracy. We've lost. We'll go home. When well, you think that's fair? I think that would be fair because he didn't put it in his last manifesto or the previous one and he did a consultation and ignored it. So he's got no mandate whatsoever. In fact, he said uh, uh, before his last election to convince people to vote for him, I'm not going to expand the ultra low emission zone to outer London. That's exactly what he's done. And he's just come out the other day that he said, I'm not going to bring in the, Z, the ZEZ, which is the zero emission zone. And that was leaked. He didn't give that out himself. He, he, that was a plan that, he le that got leaked. And he said, oh yes, I've scrapped that plan now. But he's saying that because he knows you'll get voted out because all these people have just gone and bought compliant petrol and diesel cars and we, to be told after May they won't be able to use them either with the ZEZ which is a zero emission zone. Right. So, so he's, he's already lied to the public about that by saying oh I'm not going to do it. We know damn well he's going to do it. He lied about ULEZ and he lied about ULEZ expansion. So this is very worrying. We've got to get him out. Well rather than sit out on my arse supporting it. Yep. My son said, they got a march down here today, protest, why don't you go down there? So we're right, he only worked around the corner, so I thought, yeah, I'll come down here and have a, see what's going on. Everybody's day and night. We're all suffering, yep. everybody, you know, young and old. And now he's hit us with this. Um, we can't all afford new cars, you know, and for what they give you, anyhow, what are you going to get for two grand? That's if you're lucky to get yeah. two grand. Yeah. Uh, basically, where I live, you walk around the corner and there's farms and fields within five minutes walking and there's a camera just around there so I have to go through that if I want to go shopping. You know, you want to go to the lakeside, you've got, you got to go past it. You, you can't win so it's going to cost you 12 50 just to go to the lakeside and back. You know, and I use the car maybe twice a week. Now I don't use it so much. You know, I'm going to get nothing on it if I sold it. No. So, and as, as Kong got so much power, I don't understand it. Reform UK is one of the only UK-centric parties. We are not uh, a globalist-run party. I was in the Commons yesterday for breakfast, and uh, various things were said. But one of the things I can discuss is the fact that in the Lords, after the Labour Party uh, had their cabinet reshuffle, in the Lords, when the details were released, there was a group of people around Mandelson saying, congratulations, Peter in being back in charge. Right. Now that to me is scary and we know that both Blair and Mr Brown both have Keir's ear. So that is a globalist way into Labour. So if they get into government, right. again, we're going to have a globalist government run by the WHO, the WEF, But what the about, UN. We got, we've got to think about, because there's implications involved with saying things are UK-centric. For instance, is there any cause for alarm, do you think, reasonable, when you look at things like Mr Tice's wife writing a book for a globalist? Isabel. Yeah. Uh, is, is, well, it, is it worth paying any attention to, do you think? Like, no, not at all. No. Uh, you know, in, in the comments, you have to actually put across any conflicts of interests. Uh, she's uh, a writer. Uh, she ghost writes a lot. Uh, she's always done that. I think most people are aware of that. 
if uh, Tyson's PM, you never know, she may stop doing that. Well, you'd hope so. What I mean is, if, if he's trying to purport to be some sort of uh, uh, vanguard, and you were saying we're not to be worried about the, the connections to globalism, the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, to Richard Tice via Isabel Oakshot and well, Matt Hancock. She doesn't hold, as far as I'm aware, uh, I think I'm correct in this, any position within the party. We're talking about social elites, we're talking yeah. about people that have dinner with each other, yeah. we're talking about friends and colleagues. If, if you become an MP, if you become the Prime Minister, you are going to have dinner with a lot of people. Mm. Uh, you can pick and choose who yeah, right. and, and under your uh, conditions. That's what I'm saying. So what you need is trust. Yes. And we need trust in politics. No one trusts these people anymore, no. it, it, but it is a toxic environment, so are you surprised? You know, we, we need to clean up politics and, and get regain the trust of the voters. And at the moment, it, 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 we, it's not happening, and it's frustrating for me. That's how why I'm standing, because the, the whole thing is going in the wrong direction. How can we possibly ever trust any politician when they, they've actively spent £32 million on an advertising campaign on the behets or and say so of so, a social and psychological engineering firm of the government, uh, the the Spire B and Sage. Yeah, how how are people, normal people, ever supposed to respect, for the want of a better word, or trust? Because that's a that's a thing that comes. You get you yeah, respect yeah, someone yeah. you trust. How are we supposed to well, respect and trust these people? Both Labour and the Conservative Party have got a huge history of not exactly doing things which are in the public's favour, and that's got to change. You know, the UK has to be. Put for First. We don't have a bad history because we don't have a history of being in power. Is it a political party? Is it are they political parties or is it the fact there's a political class? Oh, well, I, I went to the the worst school in Sidcup. Right. I can say that because it's been renamed and changed. Right. Uh, I uh, I lived in Sidcup and then moved to uh, Bromley and then moved to Westminster. So. I'm certainly not political class, uh, and I've fought my way up the ladder. Well, I'm here today as part of the ULES and uh, ULES protest outside Parliament today, and also warning people of a jab, a new jab program coming along. When's the jab pro program coming along? Well, we don't along? know, but don't there's know. talk of ending this month during the autumn. They'll probably postpone it to sometime in the autumn. But they're doing scare stories now about a fake virus. Thank you very much, Piers Corbyn. Thank you.